this is a power supply. It's like out of one of my computers. You can see it's got a big yellow sticker that says, do not open this up. There are things inside of here that could really hurt you a lot. And indeed, you want to be very careful when working around power. Whenever you're working with power supplies or any part of the power inside of your computer, if you're in your computer at all, unplug it from the wall and certainly don't open up your power supplies and look at what's in there. There are capacitors in there that tend to store power over, in some cases, very long periods of time. Many of the newer power supplies we find these days will bleed off that excess voltage relatively quickly. But even so, you should not go in there and start poking around with those things. They're designed to be a closed system. This is the label that's on here. There's some specifics on here. Let's drill down on this a little bit. I think I've got a zoom. There we go. So here's our label. This is from Delta Electronics, the different model of this particular a power supply. The expected input on this power supply, this is what I'm plugging into the wall that's going into the power supply, is expected to be 100 to 120 volts. That's what we do here in the United States of AC. There's a little AC symbol. And that's running and, and providing an input of at least 4 amps to be able to have this power supply work. Now, if you're running at a different voltage, which is 200 to 240 volts, of alternating current. I only need two amps coming in. That voltage uh, calculation, a little bit smaller number of amps needed to run this power supply. So you can already see this power supply will work whether I'm in uh, a, a country that has the 100 to 120 volt or in a country that does 200 to 240. Some power supplies will automatically switch between the two. Others have a switch on the back. We'll look at that in just a moment. But in this case, we don't have to worry so much about where we are in the world. We can plug into almost anything. Now, this runs at frequencies of 47 hertz to 63 hertz for these frequencies of AC. So you want to be sure that the frequencies, if whether you're 50 hertz or 60, I think we're kind of covered there for the frequency settings. So that's the input. Let's look at the output. The output is going to be a lot of different kinds of power connections. I'm going to go back one slide real quick. Notice how the back of this power supply are many, many, many different wires. Each one of those wires does something different. We're going to look at that in just a moment. And there are different voltages coming down these wires because our motherboards and other components use different voltages depending on what the particular device is. So the output voltage, there are many what we call different rails of voltage. There's a positive 5 volt, positive 12 volt, a positive 3.3 volt, a negative 12 volt, a negative 5 volt, and there's this positive 5 volt standby. Now, this standby voltage is used uh, when your computer is turned off. There is still power going to the motherboard, even though we've hit the power off button on the front. You notice we don't have a big switch anymore to turn things off. We have a simple little button, or we sometimes we even touch our keyboard and our system boots up. And that's because what we're really looking for is a piece of software telling our computer it's time to start up now. It's not a physical switch anymore. And that's why you want to be very careful when you're working inside of your computer. So the output, if it's a plus 5 volt of DC, there's our DC symbol, is going to output 16 amps. Uh, if it's 3.3 volts for this power supply DC, it's going to output 9.2 amps. Different power supplies will output different voltages, different types, uh, or output different amperages at different rails. So you need to look at the voltages and how much amps they are putting out. And it, that will go back to depend on how many different components are inside of your computer, what voltages they expect, and how many amps they will need. Not all power supplies are alike in that type of configuration. Notice it does say that the uh, 145 watts of output is what you can expect to be a maximum for this one. And it says the plus 5 volt and plus 3.3 volt total output is not to exceed 110 watts. So now we've got an idea of just the capacity of this power supply. We can compare it to what's inside of our computer with our motherboard and our different components and see if we need a this power supply, or maybe we should get one that's bigger or one that provides a different amount of amperage depending on the voltages that we're going to need inside of that computer. Figuring out the exact power supply you're going to need is a bit of a math session. But fortunately, once you have the right power supply, the types of connectors inside of your systems are very standardized. One that is very, very common is one we've tended to call the Molex connector. This is the company that actually makes this connector. But it's been around, well, you can think of the computer world practically forever. More generically, we refer to this as a four-pin peripheral power connector. This is traditionally what has powered up our hard drives. It's powered up even video cards and other peripherals that we might have inside of our computer. These days, we've got other types of power connectors 
for things like floppy drives. And we've always had different connectors for floppy drives. This has been a little mini connector. And you always see this with floppy drives. It's really not used anywhere else inside of our computer. So although you may see fewer use of this lately, not a lot of computers have a lot of floppy drives in them these days. You'll see it, still see it used quite a bit on legacy computers. And the newer computers, especially the newer power supplies, provide even new kinds of connectors for the new SATA drives. And if you have a SATA hard drive, you can power it with this SATA power connection. And generally, all of your newer motherboards or your newer power supplies have connections for this SATA power coming off the back of those power supplies. So you can plug right in from your power supply directly into the back of your hard drive. And now you've got a SATA-based power connection. Power supplies have not been the same throughout the years. We've changed them as we've changed the technologies that we use. The very early power supplies, at least the, the more standardized versions of power supplies, were called the ATX 12-volt power supplies. This is what you might refer to as the original ATX power standard. It had a 20-pin motherboard connector. This is the 20-pin connector from my power supply that we were just looking at. It did have that 5 or 3.3-volt standby configuration power on there. Uh, it was very simple. You take uh, all the power from your motherboard, it uses all of those pins, you plug it in. And each one of these pins has different voltages on it. Some of them are grounds. And other parts of this video, I think we, we outline what that is. But you want to be sure, look at your power supply specifications. It will tell you what each one of those pins is. And you want to make sure that it matches what's on your motherboard. This, this standardized ATX standard was one of the first times where we had something that everybody agreed on that said, this is exactly how we're going to do power on every motherboard and on every power supply. You almost don't even have to think about it anymore.